Howdy, howdy folks. <laughs> this week at Coffee and Tools. Uh, got something happening here. I'm gonna show you like five really cool projects with 3D printing. But the thing is, if you're into 3D printing, you're gonna be really angry over why this video happened. If you're not that up on 3D printing, you might find some interest and say, hey, that's not a bad you know machine. The thing was, uh, I had a fellow just a few weeks ago was uh, discussing 3D printing a little bit with me and I was telling him about the machines. And he said, yeah, if I ever need uh, plastic toys, I'll get myself a 3D printer. Well, that just went right through me because this past few weeks even, I have not been making plastic toys. In fact, I really haven't made any toys per se for well, almost since I got the machine. I've made a few pieces, mostly to experiment with it. But so this week, Let's take a look at some, some uh, of this uh, applications with 3D printers that this old boy just didn't, didn't see it, didn't see it coming. And the first we're gonna start with is a MIG welder repair. What? Yeah, on a 3D printer, yes. So I had this MIG welder and the, I put a new cable on. Actually, let's open this up. And I put a new cable on and I changed the cable. Uh, Probably should have uh, probably should have shot a, a show all about how to you know change and upgrade a cable on a on a on one of these welders, but this was the beginning of something. And once I got the cable changed out, I didn't like the way this uh, cable was kind of you know this was hanging, wasn't really supported. So I made a 3D two-piece collar that goes up in here, locks up on the inside, and supports the cable. That's made on a 3D printer. In fact, let's let's just take a quick look around here a little bit, and I'll just pull it out a little more so you can see it. Um, there's the large end is on this end, so it's like a, a large collar, and that locks the rubber, which is this piece here, into this machine, so the whole thing is supported, and I'm not you know trying to pull on the cable or do something weirdness going on. That was one upgrade. The next upgrade I did is let's see if we can get this off of here for a second and I'll show you guys what I made. This was really a cool project. Oh man, this is a cool project. And this is uh, one of those things again, if you have a 3D printer, you know, you can do stuff like this. See if we can get you down in there just a little bit further. That looks good. And so I'll take this off and I made this really cool little spool holder. If you've got a 3D printer, you already know all about spool holding, but I made a plastic spool holder that turns around that allows this to be, you know, held rather nicely on here because what was under there was an old rusty washer flopping around kind of thing. So I uh, put that together and got these uh, nuts in place to lock it. But the thing was, you have to create a little bit of drag with these spools or you'll end up with what we call a rat's nest. But anyways, I made that little spool holder for this on the 3D printer for a Century MIG welder. The other thing I made, and I haven't, I just used it one time, but I was uh, coming up with just a basic knob, and the knob was for uh, the top of the spool holder in case I decide to do away with the nuts. There's a couple of other uh, issues here that I was looking at and thinking, you know, I can make it with a 3D printer, I can make the pieces I need, and I can change this stuff around. That was, a, that's job one, you know. Let's go to the next one. This one here is a kind of a fun little project, and all it was was I, I have this one corded drill and I just sort of keep it around the workbench or the project bench here and I just wanted some place to hang it or some place to keep it. I found this print on Thingiverse and it's not a great print but it's not bad and it'll hold most uh, the Milwaukee, the, the uh, DeWalt and the Ryobi didn't fit too good but this particular Ryobi uh, seems to sit pretty snugly on it so I'm pretty happy with that. But again, this is just a, you know, made with a 3D printer. It's not a toy. It's, it's actually a functional item that helps me with my tools. So, like I said, this, this guy uh, was a little bit upsetting to hear, you know, if I want to print toys. This is going to be a bonus this week, I guess, but I also made some rails just recently. Let's take a look at that whole situation. If you follow the channel a little bit, you'll know that I built some of these uh, rails for the tack life saw and I'll back this up just a little bit so you can see me a little bit better and the uh, cross cut or sled for what it's worth 
I designed and made it so that it will store underneath the uh, tack life. So it'll, it'll store right on the saw. So when you don't, you're not using the cross cut, you got a place where you can put it. And also, you can also use it for storing other tools and what have you. The only thing was, uh, this was, this was a project, again, where I had to customize and, you know, make some rails that would fit this type of uh, pattern. And I had to sand them a little bit on the sides, but they fit great. And the cross cut, I'm very pleased with it, not a problem. So that worked out great. But again, this is not a toy from a 3D printer. This is an application with a tool, wood cutting tool. Hey, you know, 3D printing, come on, you know. Let's go to the next one. Yeah, the... Uh, this saw was abandoned because of uh, the plastic that was falling off it. And so if you guys watch the show, you'll know we already sort of converted this saw, but we were able to rescue it with a 3D printer, make the parts we need in order to make the saw usable again. And, I, you know, this is a situation where with a 3D printer, let's face it, guys, you know, you can fix your tools. And in this case, I fixed a, a nice saw that has years of life left in it yet. Uh, even although it is a Hitachi, hmm, who knows? Anyways, this is project. Let's see, I've showed you one, two, three, four. We're going to do five, I guess, today. But the fifth one is another one that was not unlike this situation where parts are missing. And if you have a 3D printer, it's just plastic. The whole world is full of plastic right now. Uh, look at your car. There's not a lot of metal in a car anymore. So plastic is not just for toys. I guess that was my point, but <laughs> this is this was another repair job using a 3D printer. MIG welder, uh, tool holder for the uh, drill, uh, rails for the sled for cross cut for table saw, repair on a Hitachi saw, and now also had a problem with my Ryobi uh, oscillating sander. Let's take a look. So, so the Ryobi oscillating sander. I got this thing for next to nothing, and so there wasn't any parts with it. In fact, the only, uh, they only had two rings. They had this one here, and they had the one that's in there right now for the, for the big one. And the problem was I didn't have any more rings. And I thought, well, you know, I, I can probably get away without it. But uh, eventually I realized one day, I was like, hey, I have a 3D printer. I can make all the rings I want for all the different sizes. So I made the ones that are turn this around. I made the different sizes that I would use for this particular saw, or excuse me, for this particular sander. So I have the, the, the four sizes here. There's a fifth one here that did come with it, but these were, <clears throat> these were like a no-brainer. I measured these up. They're only exactly a hundred millimeter across uh, diameter. And then I had to measure the holes, which are just slightly oversized from the uh, sandpaper that would be running, you know, in and out of the hole. So, hey, again, 3D printer repaired something, or in this case, created something that the machine was missing from years ago. So, I've had the machine for a while, but I've slowly gathered all the pieces for it so that I can, uh, so I can use it whenever I want to. So that was five items this week, actually one, two, three, four, yeah, five, five projects on woodworking tools that were fixed, repaired, or customized using a 3D printer. And, you know, I guess what I'm saying is, you know, you need to take a, take a, talk to your buddies, you know, and t explain it to them. The 3D printer, it, yeah, it's plastic. But you can also run, we all know in 3D printing, you can run, you can run metal, you can run anything these days with a 3D printer. But these particular uh, consumer uh, 3D printers, just running PLA plastic, there is so much that you can do in like a woodworking shop or around cars or whatever. There's so much customization and it's just a matter of, you're only limited by your skill. So this week, a little on the short side maybe, We've got other projects in the works, lots of them. And this was just something that happened that came up in the last couple of weeks. And I thought, really need to just take a look at the last big five kind of, you know, major projects that were going on that were 3D printer related to where I customized or repaired a tool in my shop or even upgraded. In the, in the case of the MIG welder, it's actually been upgraded using a 3D printer. Wow. Boom. So, guys, thanks for tuning in. We'll be back next week with cool stuff. 
Oh, before I forget, please like, share, subscribe. Oh, 